Hello and welcome to another video from S15 Studio. I would appreciate it if you can like and subscribe and leave any video recommendations down in the comment section. And be sure to check out my website s15studio.com where I have courses on Revit and AutoCAD. Today we're diving into a complex yet crucial aspect of Revit, the view range. If you've ever found yourself resorting to trial and error when dealing with it, you're not alone. So in this video, I'm going to explain in detail how the view range works. Revit's view range is defined by Autodesk as a set of horizontal planes that control the visibility and display of objects in a plan view. Every plan view, including the reflected ceiling plans, have this property. It consists of a primary range and the view depth. The primary range has a top plane, a cut plane, and a bottom plane. The top plane sets the upper limit and the bottom plane determines the lower limit of the view range. The cut plane is in between these, delineating how elements will appear in the view. And then there's the view depth. This is an extension beyond the primary range. You can adjust this to control the visibility of elements beneath the bottom plane of the primary range. So I'm going to open up my ground floor plan. How we adjust the view range of this plan is in the properties palette. So we'll scroll down to the extents heading and there we have view range. So we'll click on edit. We can also type in VR in the keyboard. This brings up the view range dialog box. To the bottom left hand corner, we have a show button that will reveal the illustration, which labels all of the different ranges of our view range. So we start at the bottom, we have number seven, which is the view range. The view range includes all of the different planes within the view range. We have our view depth, number six down below in yellow here. So that is below the bottom plane. Then we have number five, which is the primary range, which is everything above the bottom plane. That includes the primary range bottom, the cut plane here in the middle and the top. So over on the right hand side, we see first we have our top, Referring back over to number one. So there it is there, number one. And then below that is our cut plane. That's number two, which is cutting across here. Our bottom, which is number three, which will lie on the floor level. When we start a new project, all of these figures are default. So our bottom will always have an offset of zero. So it's lying on the ground floor level. Our cut plane will be offset up from that by 1500. And our top level will be 2300. If we wanted to adjust the levels of these, we'll simply change the, the figure here. So I'm going to cancel out of that and come back to my illustration section. So we can see here in my illustration, I've outlined the same as in Autodesk's illustration. So at the bottom there, we have our view depth level, which is below the bottom plane. We have our bottom plane of the plan view, which will always sit on the ground level unless we apply an offset. There's our cut plane sitting 1500 mil above that and our top plane, which is 2300 mil from the bottom plane. So all those three are known as the primary range and then the bottom plane and view depth is known as the view depth. Now let's understand how view range impacts the visibility of elements. As a general rule, elements outside of the view range are not visible. So down below here, under the view depth level, we can see a soil waste pipe and in the plan view, it is not visible. So if I bring it up inside my view depth level, we see that in the plan view, it now starts to appear. And if I bring it back down outside of the view depth level, it will disappear. Same goes for the top plane view. We have a fan ceiling and ducting, which does not appear in our plan view. However, elements within the range can be portrayed using the cut line weight, the projection line weight, or the beyond line style. If I go to the manage tab and open up the object styles, if we take the walls for an example, there we have walls. So the projection line weight is one, and when it is cut, it's shown as three. So here we have the projection line weight of one on that half wall and a cut line weight of three when the wall is cut. The beyond line style is represented with a dashed red. By default, this may be different on your version. And we can simply change that by going to additional settings, line style. There we have beyond. 
So by default, it'll be projection line weight one, color will be black, and the line pattern will be solid. So I've changed it to a dashed red for the illustration purposes. And what the beyond line style represents is anything that is beyond our bottom plane. So right now that dashed red line is representing the foundation of the wall. The height of the cut plane plays a crucial role. Elements below the cut plane use the projection line weight. So our chair and our desk, for example, while those intersecting with the cut plane are exhibited with the cut line weight. Elements above the cut plane are typically not displayed unless they fall into certain categories like a window, casework or general model. So in our section view, we can see there's casework sitting above the cut plane and we can see it's represented by a dashed line type. In some cases, elements that are intersected by the cut plane will be displayed using the projection line weight rather than the cut line weight. And there are two reasons why this would happen. Walls that are shorter than two meters are not cut, even when they're intersected by the cut plane. So we can see in our section view, there's a half wall and we can see clearly that it's being cut by the cut plane, but in our plan view, it's being displayed in projection line. If I increase the height of that wall to two meters, we can now see in our plan view, it is displaying a cut line weight. And if I select it again and reduce it down to 1800, the other reason that cut elements might be displayed with the projection line weight is that for some categories, certain families are simply not cuttable. For these families, it is just the rule that they are displayed with the projection line weight, even if they are intersected by the cut plane. Over in the Autodesk Knowledge Network, they list out all of the cuttable families. So we'll have the family on the left and whether it's cut in plan on the right. As well, there is a list of non-cuttable families as well. The links for these will be down below in the description. Let's now explore some examples of how the view range affects different elements in a plan view. So I've got my ground floor plan on the left and the section view on the right, which is this section here. So I'm going to zoom in so we can see it clearly. So we're cutting through the external wall, the stairs and the toilet. First, let's take elements intersected by the cut plane, which is this dashed red line here. These are typically walls, doors, windows and non-cuttable elements like furniture. So we can see our external wall is showing the cut line weight of three. Our door is showing that it is cut as we're able to see the inner workings of the door and same with the window. So our cut plane is set to 1500. If I come and open up my view range, and if I increase my view range to 2000, and when I press apply, you'll see where we're getting the cut through the stairs, which is here, will increase in height. So now the cut has moved around further around as that cut plane has moved up another 500 mil. If I bring it up to 2250, so just under the top plane, press apply, press OK. And I'll also move my red line up to 2250 so we can clearly see it. So our cut plane is now cutting through the external wall and skipping over the window. We'll see the window is now being displayed as such. We're cutting through this wall here and the door is being displayed like so. And we're able to see more of the stairs. So if I was to increase the top plane all the way up to the underside of the floor and we can increase the cut plane as well, we'll see more of that stairs. So I'm come back in and reduce the cut plane back to 1500. And I can also do that here. Next, we're going to consider elements that are below the cut plane which is this line here, and above the bottom plane, which sits on our ground floor. 
These elements like chairs, desks and cabinets are displayed using the projection line weight. So there we can see our sink, toilet, the dining room set. They're all shown in the projection line weight. Then we have elements that are above the cut plane, which is this one here, and below the top plane. These are typically elements like wall mounted casework. So for example, in the toilet, we have a cabinet that sits above the cut plane and below the top plane, and that's denoted as a dashed line. And finally, the view depth, which is the lower line. So I've moved up to my first floor to demonstrate this. And on the first floor, what I want to show is the surrounding footpaths and everything that's on the ground floor. So go to the view range. We have our view depth at the bottom. And if I hit the drop down arrow, we can go down as far as the ground floor, ground level, or we could go unlimited. If we go down to the ground level, we'll see all of the footpaths. If I go to the unlimited, it's going to show also the foundation. So if I open, I'll select the ground level, press OK, press OK. So for this view, the Beyond Line style is showing as one in thickness, black in color, and a solid line. So if I go to the Manage tab, Annotation Settings, Line Styles, there's my Beyond Line style. If I convert that over to red, and we'll also change it to dash. Press apply, press OK. So everything that is on the ground level is now being displayed in a red dash line, indicating that it is below our first floor level. I've now opened up my ground floor ceiling plan. So the view range also affects the reflected ceiling plan. One thing to remember is the view range affects visibility similarly in a reflected ceiling plan but there's no bottom plane here. So the view depth is defined upwards from the cut plane. So in the section view there, that's my cut plane. We're now going upwards to the top plane. So that is the difference with the reflected ceiling plan. If I come to my view range, we see our bottom plane is grayed out. We cannot change it. We do have control over the cut plane, which is taken from the ground level, and it's then offset up by 2300. So our cut plane is 2300 above the ground level. So anything that's within that view range is then displayed in our ceiling plan. So we have our ceiling, our fan, our lights, and so on. If we had ducting or anything else, that'll also be displayed here. And lastly, what I would like to show you is if our window was to sit outside of our cut plane. If I change our window to a 610 height, reduce it down to below the cut plane. And if we see in our section view, there's our window. It's sitting well below the cut plane, but we don't want it to be displayed on our plan view as such. So how we get around that is we go to the view tab, plan views, we have plan region. And before I click that, what I want to do is convert over to the wireframe so I can clearly see the outer edge of the window. We then go back to our view, plan views, plan region. And what we're doing is we're applying a region over the wall. We can either do that by line. I'm going to choose the rectangle tool and we just trace over the boundary of the window, green tick to finish. We've now placed our plan region over the wall. Now we just have to instruct it on, on what we want it to do. So we select the plan region, go to view range in the contextual tab. And in here, we then adjust the cut plane level. And this will only take effect to this particular plan region. So there's our cut plane. If I reduce it down to one meter, press apply, press OK. Now we're able to visibly see our window again. So coming back to the section view. So Although our window is below the cut plane, in our plan view, we can utilize the plan region to show our window. And there we have it, a deep dive into Revit's view range. Remember, practice makes perfect, so don't be afraid to experiment and test these concepts out on your own project. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and head over to my website, S15 Studio, where I have multiple courses on Revit. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.